Now is the time. We're going to sit down and we're going to watch two guys go out there and nobody knows what's going to happen next. Vargas comes to fight, but so do Ricardo Mayorga. I'm going to give you this one last opportunity for you to be able to collect a, a check and thereafter a pension check because I'm going to retire you from boxing. This will be my last fight. I do it for one reason and one reason only, and that's pride. I'm going to do your wife a favor and not let her cry anymore after they disfigure every time that you go into a... We should have sold tickets to this. As Fernando Vargas continues to train for his final fight, he still carries the burden of bitter emotions towards his biological father. I did have a sparring uh, with my with my father. One time he came into the Balacorone boxing gym trying to tell me, you know, I should do this and I should do that in sparring. And I got pissed off, you know what I mean? And uh, I told him to put on the gloves and show me. I remember putting it on him, knocking him down with a body shot or two, and, and then time to get up. Let me see, be a man and get the fuck up. He used to imagine his biological father's face on his opponent's face. And as soon as the bell rang, he went to get some revenge. Garcia taught him, you know, hey, focus yourself. Learn your craft in boxing. Make something of yourself and, and, and be a father to your own children. And I think Vargas tries very hard to do that. And I think he does pull that off. I know that I'm real protective over my kids because of what I've gone through. And um, I make sure that you know, my kids know that I love them. And I tell them that every day. Across the country, Ricardo Mayorga prepares for this all important bout, motivated not only by hatred, but by love. Like I've always said, a man, you know, he always has a lady, a number one lady in his heart, and that's my mom. Nobody can take it away. Like a fighter could be in the ring fighting, and he could be 50,000 voices screaming, but he can, he can hear his mother, his trainer, his family. And I hear my mother when she says, come on, son, I know you can do it. But when I know that my mom is behind me, sitting down, and she's looking at me fighting, and it just makes me feel like a gladiator, and I love her so much, and I know she loves me, and I just want to stand up and fight. I love her when she says, hit that sucker really hard. You know, my dad was a taxi driver, and my mom had an oven, had an oven in the house, and she would make groceries and stuff like that, you know. So it wasn't enough, you know, it wasn't enough food for all of us. In Managua, Nicaragua, where he grew up, no running water. No electricity. As a matter of fact, one of the first things he did once he made some money was put in running water and electricity in his mom's house, and I believe it cost him about forty thousand dollars. Champion! Ah, champion! Oh, great to see you. I never get tired of saying this. Thank you, and to God, my family has food on the table. I decided to go to Costa Rica because they had a professional boxing. That's where I met Mr. Luis Leon, who was here present. He became my father, my friend, my brother, because he would give me water, he would give me a home, he gave me food. And you know, it's been, I don't know how many years already, you know, from 92, and he's been like, he's a quiet guy, he's a Catholic man, he's a great man. He doesn't mess with nobody, and you know, we've been together all this time. But sometimes, I just want to strangle him. He married my sister. <laughs> he has four years that he's been married to my sister.